Hello, welcome to the Teardown Lab. I have a PCB from Andy Beer, Sad Ken, called BBC Master ROM Cartridge. And while I don't have all the parts, I think we can have a little bit of fun just soldering the parts that I do have, kindly provided by said Andrew Beer. Now, something that's a little bit disappointing on, on the... Uh, when you lay out certain PCBs for ROMs. I'm just going to show you what the disappointment is. It has nothing to do with what Andy's done. It's to do with these. If you get any of these ZIF type sockets, you'll rarely, you'll find that they really, really, rarely will fit a standard hole. So if you're ever intending to use one of these, make sure you fit the appropriate size <laughs> vias, I suppose. I don't know what you call those, through plated holes? Holes, basically. Choose the right holes. Good advice to us all forever. So the first component is in my hand the five two seven four. Okay, it's obviously one of those chips, but I think they're two different sizes, so that's going to be fine. The numbers on the chip didn't quite match. That's the bit that started to throw me. Oh my gosh! Oh, nurse, nurse, what have you done, Andy? Andy, please. Look how rude that is. That's a rudely executed manoeuvre. <laughs> That's going to give trouble. That's going to give trouble. Oh my word. Okay, so the, today the title of this video is how to discombobulate the legs. That is looking well dead, isn't it? Oh my gosh. Okay, so basically you've only got one chance at this. And you've got to get it right first time because if you bend these legs, I'd say phew, I know, more than a couple of woggles, it's going to definitely snap. Oh, there we go. So I'm just doing the, the main bend because that one's crunched in. I think whatever you uh, push that into, that foam, Andy, is not the foam you want to use. <laughs> I, I would I would suggest a really easy one. If you're at home, by the way, and you want to send a chip, just get a bit of polystyrene off anything. A bit of polystyrene. Wrap a bit of tin foil around the polystyrene, and that's all you need. Some foil wrapped poly will do the job. Because if you see this chip, it would almost be just as good if it's packed with nothing. Because realistically, I think you're more likely to get a dead pin than uh, some static discharge. So enough with the discharge talk. Let's see if we can pop this in. That one doesn't live there. It wants to live there. That's how many legs it's got. Now I've got to be extra cautious because all of these legs are all just a little bit, bit off. So I'm just going to give it a little squeeze. And you can do this too if you're making any old kit. Uh, they're all lined up, so I'm going to give it uh, one hefty heave, and it's in nicely. Let's see. Oh, this one's got a couple of naughties. I'm just going to... If you've got some good tweezers that sit flat like that, you can just squish them in. A bit like a press break and uh, get them all at once. You can actually use that to bend them too. So I'm doing it in both axes. Let's see if that's done the trick for us. It certainly has, and they could do with a little bit of a tightening. So we're just going to put that on the bench, give it a pesh, and it's perfection. Just wondering why we're on this side of the board. Do we want to put in any of the other components? But I kind of feel we should just solder the main ICs in while we're here. I'm just convincing the last couple of legs that they want to go in the holes. It's looking pretty good. Let's flip it over. It's my favourite type of orientation, and I'm um, I'm using the leaded, sorry, the lead-free solder. I want to correct myself. It's the unleaded solder, and I know that might be considered a bit of a surprise, but it's because I'm really just trying to I'm trying to make the effort. That's good. Look at that. Now I literally moved 
my soldering iron <laughs> just before this video and it's actually making a weird noise. It's making a ticking sound. That doesn't sound healthy. Okay. We didn't even use flux. Hmm, so we do have a number of other components. We seem to have four ceramic caps, one electrolytic cap, three resistors of the same value. I'd have to take a guess that that's probably our electrolytic cap, and judging by the pin ads, that would be that way. We'll have to check. That does look like the ground plane there, so that would probably be that way. But before we pop that in, let's do the ceramics. And they seem a little bit on the uh, wide side as well. So if you don't want to push in a ceramic and break it, you'll have to kink it if it's a bit too wide for the hole. So basically get your twazers and you've got to bend it. I can try to show you. It will focus. Please focus. There you go. So put a little kink on that. And if you want to do it belt and braces, do it to both sides. So it looks something like that. You go, you've got the before and the after. And if we're lucky, it'll fit. And it does. Hooray! Sorted out the ticking problem in the iron, just moved it around a bit. Must have just been not sitting level. with your side cutters. Mm. I just noticed while bending these up to fit them that actually the capacitors have plating on both sides. So really, depending on how you want to, you could decide to mount them all on the, s on the back, for example, or on the front. I'm just gonna go with what's marked out here, but you do have options. That's all I wanted to say, you do have options. Now I don't know if this is a publicly available design or not, but you can ask Andy, just Twitter Sad Ken, and say, hey, Mush, is this a design you stole off GitHub? Actually, to be fair, I don't think he stole it because he didn't put, there's no naming on it, it's just a standard one. Well, they maybe designed it. I really should have found out, Andy. Should I? I should have asked you more. You probably did tell me at the time, but you sent this quite a long time ago. This was this is a pre-COVID thing. COVID was just the glimmer in the eye of a rabid bat. I read somewhere, by the way, because people were saying it was somebody ate a bat, but apparently they reckon it was something that ate a bat. Somebody ate something that ate a bat. It's a bit like that woman who swallowed a fly. I don't know why she swallowed a fly. Actually, did she swallow? I think the fly was first. Then the spider. Then the cat. Then the shrew. And then the weasel. Right. I feel we're on the home straight here. I almost wish I decided to do this a little bit earlier when I was on a parts supplier website. I could have ordered myself a couple of blank ROMs. What I do like about this though, if you did decide that you're just going to throw caution to the wind and solder your EEPROM straight on here, this whole device would quite easily fit inside your UV erasing gadget. So there's a switch there, that's a nice little dip. I guess that's for selecting the banks. It's giving you options. 
Makes you wonder though if the BBC Master, you could probably hook up some additional dress lines somewhere, couldn't you? Make your own MMU. What's that? That's a lovely board to put together though, isn't it? Nice and simple. Right. I'm going to buzz out the ground plane. The thing I think is clear, it's, I'm sure it's the ground plane. I'm, I'm positively, absolutely sure of it, yeah. And that's where we're going to put our negative. But I feel that would stick out way too much. I feel Andy would have, he would have known I wouldn't have been happy with that. So he was designed this to go sit. Sit like that, 90 degrees. If you want to, you could put a bit of hotness on there. A bit of hot snot. And what I'm going to do though, before I do anything, I'm going to solder it from the top because I really want to maintain that perfect alignment. It's just, just where I want it. I'll go around and do the other side, but I just want to get it tacked on. Gently, gently. Oh, oh. Gently, gently, said the spider to the fly. Is that a thing? I don't know if that's actually a thing. I just, uh, it sounds like something I think I've heard. Something about the spider. He's chatting to that fly. Come on to my wandering proboscis. Okay, and there, we are finished-ish. I need to get hold of a couple of these 27128s and then that's it. That's my BBC Master ROM cartridge and I guess these are all doing the multiplexing. I'm really quite sure that's what it is. And how you do that, you'd say, I want Chucky Egg. I want, look at this, you've got all these modes actually. I'm presuming you've got your, let's see, Chucky Egg, that one, and then that one up, Citadel, Elite, Exile, Repton 1, Repton 2, Repton 3, Whoa. Around the World in 80 Reptons, Repton Christmas Special Edition and Blogger. So all the games you ever need are there right away. Hope that's been of some use to you or some interest. As ever, thanks for watching.